welcome back guys to another video and in this video we are going to test how a fan over the raspberry pi 3 uh, with a heat sink uh, can help improve the performance on a raspberry pi 3 by cooling it down and pretty much uh, reducing or eliminating thermal throttling uh, completely so today uh, we are going to test uh, in a real world environment that means we are not going to use any synthetic tests we are going to use uh, something real world uh, something uh, an actual application that people might use so uh, let's go ahead and first of all uh, we will be testing uh, without the fan so I'll just open up the case and uh, that would put the fan away from the heat sink over that the SOC so I'll go ahead and pull this off there we go uh, so the uh, SOC is actually without uh, any airflow or very minimal airflow so we should uh, get it to a thermal throttle quite a lot so uh, let's move ahead and I'll show you guys uh, what the test bench looks like So on the uh, upper window you guys can see that uh, uh, it's showing us the current temperature uh, as well as the current clock speed which is at 600 megahertz right now because uh, the CPU is in idle state. Uh, the room temperature is uh, varying uh, around 28 to 30 degrees Celsius and let's go and for our test we'll be using something called uh, Tangram ES now it's not an application uh, we'll not be actually using Tangram ES but uh, we will uh, be compiling Tangram ES from source so we will actually be using uh, applications like CMake uh, G++ and GCC uh, and we'll be pretty much loading up the CPU with some real uh, uh, and useful uh, compilation uh, and we'll be using Tangram uh, ES as uh, our compilation source. So uh, let's go ahead and compile uh, uh, Tangram ES with all the four cores. So of course uh, we'll be using make with the J4 option and then we'll be making it for the Raspberry Pi. And with that I will also be starting a timer on my phone and we'll be testing out uh, how much time it takes to uh, first of all thermal throttle and then how much time it takes uh, with and without the fan to complete the compilation so to see if there are any real world benefits at all all right guys so as you can see uh, I do have my stopwatch uh, right here and I will be uh, recording the time uh, of how much time it takes to uh, reach the thermal throttle limit as well as how much time it takes to complete the whole compilation and then we'll be uh, comparing the results. So first of all without any fan in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so it's uh, 5 minutes now and if you guys can see, we have started the thermal throttle. Uh, we are at 80 degrees uh, in about 5 minutes. So here you can see the main difference between uh, a synthetic test and a real uh, world test. Uh, in the synthetic test, we were able to thermal throttle at only 3 minutes of continuous use. But uh, a real world test doesn't always mean that the CPU would be uh, running purely at its uh, full capacity. So here we it took us uh, with the with almost a very heavy load. So uh, compiling a source code to binary is one of the most heavy load, and it took us uh, around five minutes to reach uh, that point. And uh, it does not stay at uh, 80 degrees as you can see, it does uh, come back to 70-76 once uh, the load is a little bit more lighter. 
but uh, it's uh, it will actually soon go uh, right back up and i will come back once it has finished compiling uh, everything and then we will do a test with the fan on all right so we are back and uh, the build finished at 12 minutes and 17 seconds so uh, let's do another one with uh, the fan attached and running and actively cooling the uh, raspberry pi 3 so i'll reset the timer and i'll just uh, give me a second and I'll just uh, attach the fan uh, back and uh, we should be good to go. Alright, so we have our fan attached and the temperatures are uh, reducing uh, already all right so let's clean out the build directory and start over again so as you can see the temperatures are already actively uh, decreasing uh, because of the fan and I will just go ahead and uh, uh, I have the stopwatch timer here and in 3, 2, 1 uh, Alright guys so we have hit the uh, 4 minute mark and the max uh, at this time the pi started to thermal throttle uh, that means it was over 80 degrees celsius uh, but with that tiny fan on uh, we are just over 55 degrees celsius and it's bouncing around the same temperature now i'm not very sure how high it will go but my prediction is that it will stay uh, below 60 degrees at any cost uh, and I'll come back to you once the uh, compilation is done and then we'll see if it's actually faster if that 200 megahertz uh, extra that we will be getting from uh, the by not thermal throttling at all uh, is any uh, is of any use to us uh, when it comes to compiling some programs all right guys so it's almost 12 minutes and the compilation uh, actually ended uh, around uh, 30 seconds earlier uh, more or less uh, I, I was actually expecting more of a, a minute or two gap uh, between the two scenarios but uh, this is uh, how much of a performance improvement you will get uh, roughly speaking now uh, in any real world test the result actually varies a lot depending upon what kind of test you choose so depending upon your applications uh, probably uh, maybe you are building a kernel and it gets a bit too hot uh, and uh, makes a lot of difference or you are building something like uh, the uh, let's say retro pie from source which uh, can take way over 24 hours if you are doing it on a raspberry pi 1 uh, and more like uh, uh, at least 10 hours on a raspberry pi 2 uh, more or less so uh, maybe uh, with something like that the uh, it actually scales to a much uh, great uh, larger extent but uh, this is uh, what it is and if you have uh, such heavy use of the raspberry pi maybe you are building your projects di directly on the raspberry pi instead of using uh, cross compilation or you are uh, doing the same for some kernel custom kernel that you are using and stuff like that uh, i would actually uh, recommend using a fan nonetheless because 
uh, one might argue that the uh, higher temperatures actually uh, lead uh, in CPU degradation. Uh, now, uh, uh, till I further talk about uh, the conclusion, I would actually uh, like to show you guys what Tangram ES actually is since I am using that software anyways uh, to make this video. Uh, so I'll just go to uh, the directory and run Alright, so as you can see, this is a 3D mapping software, uh, and the map is all in 3D. I, uh, I, I don't think I am able to zoom. So this is kind of what it looks like. For some reason, the zoom and the uh, uh, any other control are not working. Uh, but it's all in 3D, it's all in OpenGL. Uh, it usually works really stable, but uh, right now, uh, for some reason, it's not. So, uh, anyways, uh, I can move it here so that you guys can stare at the uh, blue lit uh, Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so, my final conclusion is uh, if you have any heavy work. Uh, that might put the CPU temperature anywhere above uh, 75 degrees uh, even with the heatsink on uh, I would actually recommend using a fan because again uh, CPU life and performance uh, might degrade uh, with uh, increase, a long increased uh, temperature uh, if you are running with uh, running the CPU on very high temperature for a very long time so that's it for this video that was the conclusion uh, use the fan if uh, you think your CPU is actually getting hot uh, earlier pies didn't even require a heatsink and people might call you crazy for using a heatsink and a fan but it's not the case here uh, it's actually pretty clear that you will be needing to use a, a, a heatsink and a fan if you're doing heavy duty stuff. As you can see, the compilation tasks are pretty heavy duty and do uh, put the CPU through a lot of stress. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time.